Hi, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at editing the general preferences in Photoshop Elements 15. Preferences are options that you can choose that affect how Photoshop Elements acts in certain situations. To get to the preferences on a Mac, you go up to the Adobe Photoshop Elements Editor menu, that first big long name menu item, and go to Preferences and General and you can see there's a keyboard shortcut which is Command K and in Windows it would be Control K. If you're on a Windows PC you would go to the Edit menu and then under Edit you'll find Preferences and General. So on my Mac I'm going to press Command K and it brings us right to the General Preferences window. Now you can see over on the left that there's several other preferences that you can get to. There's saving files and performance and scratch disks and so on. But most of the ones that people tend to set uh, different options in are under the general preferences. So that's what we're going to concentrate on today. And let's just start up at the top. Our first option at the top of the preferences dialog window is called color picker and it's actually a drop down menu if I click on it you can see there's two choices it's set to Adobe but you can also choose the operating systems color picker if you want so since I'm on a Mac my other option is Apple and if you're on a Windows PC I believe the other option is just called Windows so let's leave it on Adobe for now and let's look at what the color picker actually is. So I'm going to close the preferences. The color picker is usually used to determine what the foreground and background colors are and those are those two big squares at the bottom of the toolbox in Photoshop Elements and this top one is the foreground color and the one underneath it is the background color and you can click on either one of those so I'll click on the background color and you can see the color picker box appears it's defaulted to white so we have this vertical color bar and let's say that I wanted my background color to be a blue I would just click in the blue area of this vertical bar and then I can click and drag around in this big color square and get to different shades of blue so let's say I choose that one and I'll click OK to close the color picker and accept the change and now you can see my background color is set to blue and likewise if I click on the foreground color it also brings up the color picker and let's change it to red and click OK and now my foreground color is set to red and the foreground color is what Elements uses when you do things like if I use the paintbrush and let's say I paint with it, it paints with the foreground color. And the background color, if I use the eraser tool and erase, the part that I erase is um, replaced with the background color. I'm going to undo a few times to get rid of those. Let's go back to our general preferences and I'm going to change the color picker from Adobe to Apple. Click OK to close the box and accept the change. And now if I click on the foreground or background color, I'll click on the foreground color. You can see the color picker is different because it's the Apple's version of the color picker. There's different choices in how you can use this. Let's say I click on a green and say OK. Now my foreground color is set to green and if I take my brush tool I'm going to make it a little bigger and paint with that it paints with that green color. I'll undo that. The same thing with my background color it defaults now to the apple color picker because that's what we chose in general preferences. Let's go to the next item at the top of the general preferences box and it's called step back slash forward. What that really means is what keyboard shortcut you can use to undo and redo. So step back is undo and forward you can think of as saying redo. The default which it's set to right now is for step back it's Command plus Z. On a Windows PC it would be Control Z. And for Forward or Redo it's Command Y. 
and on a PC it would be Control Y. And if I click on that field, you can see the different options. I'm just going to leave mine set at Command Z and Command Y, or it would be Control Z and Control Y. So I'm going to say OK to that. Let's take the brush tool again, and I'll just make a squiggle over my photo. And if I want to undo that, I just press Command Z now. And it's the same as saying undo that last move, so it takes that away. If I decide, oh, wait a minute, I actually do want that, I would press Command Y or Control Y on a PC. And it comes back. Obviously, I don't want it, so I'll press Command Z again. Let's go back to our general preferences. And that next section is labeled Options. Instead of drop-down menus like the last two, these are either on or off checkboxes. The first one is called Show Tool Tips, and it's checked on by default. What that does is displays information when you hover your mouse over certain areas. I can actually show you right in the Preferences dialog box here. If I hover over Show Tool Tips, that little box pops up says determines whether to show tool tips for controls and tools and then it disappears rather quickly too and I think I can hover over any of these items so this says which color picker to use which we saw earlier this one says select keys for undo and redo operations let's click OK to close the general preferences box and I want to show you if I hover my mouse over any of the tools in the toolbox, it gives the name of the tool and in parentheses the keyboard shortcut. So the marquee, rectangular marquee tool, it shows me that the letter M on the keyboard would be the shortcut to get to the marquee tool. I'll show you by pressing the letter M and now the marquee tool is the active tool in the toolbox. If I uncheck Show Tool Tips, now when I hover the mouse over anything, nothing pops up. I'll click OK and show you that it's the same thing if I hover over any tools. I do not get any tool tips. So that's what that does. You can turn the tool tips off if you find them distracting or annoying. Let's go back to our general preferences and take a look at the next item and that's called Disable Smart Objects. That is a brand new preference added to Photoshop Elements 15. I'll show you what it does. So I'm going to cancel out of here. I'm going to click on the photo bin and you can see in the photo bin that we have two images. One is The first one is that one that we see in the active image area and I'm going to click and drag the second image on top of that one and it gets added to that first image as a new layer as you can see over in the Layers panel. Notice on the thumbnail of that new layer, there's a tiny little icon, and that icon indicates that that layer is a smart object. That's the way Photoshop Elements has added new layers from the photo bin in the past. You drag it on there, and it's automatically a smart object. I'm not going to go into what smart objects are in this video because it would take too long, but most of the time, uh, I find I don't really want it to be a smart object because you can't do a lot of different operations on a smart object layer. For instance, if I go to the filter menu and say blur Gaussian blur, I get a warning dialog telling me that it could not complete the Gaussian blur command and I can tell you that it's because that layer is a smart object. I'll click OK to that and I'm going to undo that and let's go back to our preferences and let's turn on that box that says disable smart objects and click OK to accept it and let's do the same thing click and drag that second image on the first one and it's added as a new layer but this time we don't have the little icon indicating that it's a smart object and in fact if I go to blur Gaussian blur I don't get the warning dialog box this time and it lets me do that operation. I'm going to undo that. It's nice to be able to turn that on. I think I'm going to probably leave that on most of the time. Let's go back to general preferences and look at the next item. 
and that one is called Select Move Tool After Committing Text, and it's on by default. So I'll say OK to that, and I'm going to grab the Text Tool and click inside of my image. Let's see, I'm going to make that text bold so we can see it a little better. Let's just turn on cap locks and type the word test. Notice in the toolbox I have the text tool active and now I'm going to click the green check mark to commit to that text. When I do, over in the toolbox it goes from the text tool to making the move tool active. With the move tool active now you can move your text around or you know you can do different transformations to it. A lot of times you don't want to change the position or size and then if you want to add some more text you have to click on the text tool again. Depending on what you're doing you may or may not want to have that on but at least now you know if you add some text and the move tool is active you'll know why. And You'll also know that you can go to your preferences and turn that preference off if you prefer. And I'm going to undo that. And let's look at our next item. This next item is one that I use quite often. It's called Allow Floating Documents in Expert Mode. Cancel out of there. By default, if we look in the photo bin again we have these two images and we can see that we have a tab for each image and we can switch between the two images by clicking on the individual tabs. Sometimes I want to see both of my images at the same time. When they're in tab mode you can't do that. So let's go back to general preferences and turn that preference on and say OK to accept it. What we can do is click and drag the tab down and let go and that image becomes a separate window and I can do the same thing to the other image. Sometimes that first one gets lost. Anyway now we can have both our images side by side if we want and if I want to put them back in tab mode I can do that by just dragging on their title bar and watch as I get close to this top bar. When it turns blue like that, that indicates if I let go it'll put it back into tab mode. Let's take a look at our next preference. That one is related to our last one. It's called Enable Floating Document Window Docking. Let's turn that off so I can show you how that works. And I'm going to drag these out again as individual windows. And now let's say I want to go back into tab mode, so I'll drag them up. Well this time when I get up near the top I don't get the blue line indicating that I can put it back into tab mode. I can't put it back into tab mode, so that's what that preference is saying. Let's go back and take a look at that again. It says when this box is checked it enables floating document windows to dock, which means the same as putting them into tabs. Turn it on again and say OK. And now we get the blue line again. I can put those back into tab or as the preference refers to it as docking my images. At this point we've looked at about half of the options available in the general preferences. So I'm going to end the video here and have this be part one of a two-part tutorial. That'll give you a chance to catch your breath and try out some of these preferences for yourself. But be sure to come back for part two because I'm going to show you the one preference that can solve multiple problems in Photoshop Elements. So I'll see you in the next video.